y'all, well, I'm doing three in a row today, and that is because I had three studies. First of all, I need to be loading up more to this, this channel. It fulfills me to be in God's Word, and it's, it's important. It's important to our relationship, but much more important to our relationship and your relationship with God, to be in His Word. So I've had, I had just one study after another that God just, as I was studying in the Word of God, that He brought to me, usually it's some notes from other people that get me thinking, and then I start jumping all over the Bible for answers. I really am enjoying this particular Bible, by the way, and it's going to be one of the giveaways. What did I do with it? It's a pink hard, uh, hardback. This is um, like a faux leather one. Uh, but it's called The Woman's, not The Women's Study Bible, because there's another one called The Women's Study Bible, and it's, um, it, but it, this is similar in that it is specific, that it kind of looks at the angle as we are women, where God is speaking to us and how he's speaking to us. But this is called The Woman's Study Bible, and this is the NIV translation, and I'm really enjoying um, the inserts here. Um, and I was actually reading about um, the temple tax with... Um, where Jesus told Peter to go get, um, to go throw a line, catch a fish, and pull the drop mat out of the, um, the mouth of the fish to pay the taxes. And then I started reading about how God did the same thing with um, Moses when the people were complaining. And um, he told Moses, uh, and because they were complaining, and they broke God's laws, and they turned from him and questioned him, and he sent snakes to bite them and um, to kill them. But he also provided a rescue. God will suffer us his wrath. But then he will provide a wrath rescue. Our wrath rescue is Jesus Christ. He drank the cup of God's wrath. He talked about that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He actually went through it on the cross. And, um, But anyway, I was reading about the, the study of Moses and Numbers. There's another one I just did. And God said, you know, make a replica of, that, of a snake, put it on a pole, and if the people will look on that snake, I'll heal them. And you think, why does God do that? Why does he do all these special things that he is asking action that you have to go do something extra when he could just do like that and stop it all? It's like, he seems to require action of us because he wants to see our commitment. And that's what I want to talk about today is commitment. And, um, <laughs> really, following Jesus is the definition of commitment. And I know, I, I wish I could show it to you, in the front of my calendar, um, my day planner, I had put, what is my word for the year? And I was studying this, and it was just an hour ago that I, I looked at it and saw it. Costco made me cry. <laughs> and the word that was my focus for the year was commitment. And then, what does God do but put a story in front of me about commitment, commitment, commitment. Why? Because commitment shows, that action shows the responsibility you hold towards what you say your faith is in. And it's just words until you put it into action and show commitment to it on a long-term basis. Um, God will demand a choice of you. It's a free will choice. He won't make you love him and choose him, but he will make you make the decision whether or not you are going to do that. It's your choice, but he will make you make that choice. And um, it's because he loves us. He wants to save you. So he will put you in position time and time again until you finally turn to him. And some people say, well, I've followed God my whole life. There will be a moment in time that you make a decision that that is what you're going to do every day. And it's hard because the world will nick at you and you'll fall for it sometime. And it's like, Lord, keep me focused on you. That has to be our prayer. Um, I'm looking at the disciples in Matthew and they had to decide they were either going to be committed to him or they weren't. And he was real clear on that. They had to, decide, they had to um, deny their own way of doing things, their own desires. I just was faced with that today and yesterday. Um, are you going to go your own way and your own way of thinking and your own actions and just assert your own rights all the time when God would say, mm, 
That's not what I'm asking this time. Sometimes you will assert rights, but not to God. Um, maybe to man, there'll be things that you say, no, I'm going to do it this way. But there'll be times that he'll say, no, even give that up for right now because it's more important that you draw them to me by giving that up, by sacrificing. But when it comes to our relationship with him, um, we're looking at Matthew. If you want to put me on hold and, and look up Matthew 10, 32 through 37, um, we have to decide whether or not we're going to go our own way and deny him or if we are going to deny ourselves and go his way. And the ch this choice is the same for all believers, to commit or not commit to Jesus. And we either deny ourselves or we deny him. We either go his way or we go our way. And that's called sinning. To, do, to, be our own, to go our own way is to be our own God. So if we repent from that or turn away from that way of thinking, then we decide that we're not going to be our own God anymore. He's going to be our God and we're going to do whatever he says. And it's like, well, how do you know what he says? Well, it's like, we'll get in the word of God and learn what's his way. And then be in prayer and say, Lord, what do you want me to do with this day, with this life? And he wants you to come to him. So he's not going to be evasive. He's going to show you. But you have to, he knows when it, he knows your heart. He's the only one. That's why he says, judge not lest you be judged. It's not that for people within the church that he does not expect us to have a responsible and accountability, uh, responsible behavior and accountability. That is required. But not of unbelievers. They don't believe you. But he still will ask us to deny ourselves and pursue him by an act of our own free will. And um, if we talk all about Jesus, but we don't walk it, walk in it, it's meaningless. So that is why um, Jesus is talking to them about taking up their own cross. That is why he requires action of them. Sometimes it's unique like he did with the paying the taxes, and he said, go cast a line and catch a fish, and the money will be in the fish's mouth. It's like, what, you want me to do what? Just do it. When he was talking to Moses, when God was talking to Moses, and uh, the people had turned on Moses, and they'd turned on God. And he says, I want you to, I'm, I'm sending the, the, the snakes for that, but I want you to make a replica of the snakes, put it on a pole. He's like, what? It's like, just do it. Do what I say. And he did it, and for anybody that looked on that pole, they got cured. And what they realized was, that was supernatural. Who required that? It's like, God. And they're like, oh, that's right. He is a God of miracles. We, we need to be following him again. Oops, we screwed up. Lord, please forgive us. Let's turn. That's what he wants. That's all he wants is for us to be loyal and committed to him and to show it beyond with words. Words are good for drawing others but really what draws other people to Christ is when they see your actions. Just like children, your actions are what truly teach them. Yes, you do need to use words to clarify, to instruct. But it has to be followed up with real commitment, which is action. Um, you can't have words divorced of any responsibility. There has to be a commitment follow through in action even though God knows in advance what you're going to do it has to play out does that help um, a good example is um, Ruth uh, the book of Ruth chapter 1 verses 16 through 17 if you want to jot that down and go read that later and see if God just takes you all over the Bible doing a study um, she didn't just give verbal words to Naomi that um, she would follow her and be a part of her family. Her actions actually spoke louder than her words because she actually, Ruth left her family and her homeland to, um, to return with Naomi. That's action. That's commitment. That's I believe you now because look what you just did. Um, here's the thing about commitment. It, 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 it limits us to making an exclusive choice. And 
so it proves itself out. Um, Jesus demonstrated in the Garden of Gethsemane when he had to decide as a human. He was still God, but he also, he had two natures by then. He was the only one who's ever had two natures. He was God, the nature of God, the one and only God, and the nature of mankind. So he had two natures. And he had to decide, would he let his physical his, his new physical body desires take precedent over the plan him and his father had. Um, and the very next day he picked up that cross. And in that moment though, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he made the decision to drink God's wrath from the cup, the cup of wrath. He, he would drink that and he would suffer um, and say, not my will, but your will. Um, he wasn't in conflict with God's will, but he had a decision to make as a man and say, will I go through the physical torture to do the spiritual um, process that's needed for forgiveness? And he said, not my will as a man, but your will as God, because he was more God than man, no matter how much he was man. Some people say, which was more? I, I don't think it's even a profitable argument. Just know that he was both God and man. Um, but when we are committed to something, it builds our faith. And it builds our trust from others. Because they see that action and they they trust us. And um, look at Proverbs 16.3 and um, the follow-through in Matthew 16.24. And I hope that will help send you in some Bible studies alone with you and God. I hope these little studies are helping you. Please comment below, y'all. And I'll see you soon.